What's up, booze? I'm Kosol, your local dungeon master. And a little birdie may have told me that you might be having some issues performing in front of a crowd. Well, don't you worry your pretty little head because I'm here to be your vocal Viagra and get that larynx straightened out. Ah, uh, nope, that don't sound right. That's gotta be a strike on the channel. Doing silly voices for your tabletop campaign might seem like a monumental task, but don't worry, nephew, because there's a simple word that'll fix all your problems. Come here, son. L listen here. You, you got the volume down? Your headphones on? No one's looking, right? All right, check this out. Whenever you're trying to get your character's voice down, I want you to repeat the phrase, I am a cuck. What do you think of men who get cucked? I think they should beat their wives. Whoa, slow down there, champ. It's just an acronym. Creativity, utility, commitment, and copy. These are the foundations. No, the building blocks of creating your character voices. And after we're done here, your friends are going to think you're the goddamn second coming of Matt Mercer. Or they bully you. Either way, it's going to be a fun ride. Creativity. When you're trying to decide your character's voice, you have to dig deep within yourself. I mean really dig in there. Find the deepest parts within yourself and- Oh, oh too deep there, buddy. Back it up, son. You're the creator of this imaginary character. You know their backstory. You know their likes and their dislikes. Hell, you probably know the first time they- Menace moi, you little freak. This voice should be the essence of your character. In just a few pronunciations, you're able to tell how and where this individual grew up. You gotta come up with the creative voices that tell the audience where this person came from. Did they grow up as a troubled youth in the city? Well, maybe they got a fucking Brooklyn accent, I don't know. Are they shy or quiet? And maybe they speak in a troubled or nervous way. I gotta go see my nature. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? Or perhaps their father disappeared when they were a young boy. Then maybe they talk like this and harbor absolutely no negative feelings. <laughs> The voice your character wields should be beneficial to the character itself. Now you may be asking, What in tarnation do you mean, Papa DM? First of all, don't be using that language in my house, boy. But your character's voice should serve multiple functions. You don't want to be using some goofy voice and find out you gotta do it for the next year of your life. Imagine using a Mickey Mouse voice the whole time. Yeah, actually, that might be a pretty fun character. Mickey. Saranabida. In your campaign, you're likely to run into a variety of situations. Happy, funny, sad, you name it. Your voice should be able to adapt to these different scenarios. If you can only speak in one tone, then your character might possibly miss out on one of the most entertaining parts of role-playing. AKA, keep it simple. I'll kill them all. Steal it all! Steal it just like how I'm stealing this point from my Dungeon Master video. The movies and TV shows are right in front of you. Find a character that you love and copy their voice. Say their lines over and over. Practice it in the car. Practice it at work. Hell, practice it at your son's birth. I don't really care. All that matters is that you find repetition. A groove. Brother, you're gonna live, eat, and sleep this character until you get it down. Do you know how much one of my D&D players watched Donald Trump montages just to get his voice down? This is just a year's worth of practice right here. Everybody tells me you're the best person to talk to, so. Mr. Key, can I persuade you into opening this door? Can I use my tremendous charisma to help me out here? I don't even remember my player's actual name. I just call him Donnie. Make America great again. Turn off the lights, Sleepy Joe. Where were you January 6th, 2020? Sorry, I got a bit off track there. I think my monoxide detector needs batteries. But yeah, just copy someone's voice in a movie over and over. You'll get it eventually. <laughs> My sacred brothers, commitment is one of the final yet most important steps to mastering your character voice. You must fully engage into your character, for better or worse, for that is the only way to improve. It may even start off bad, but as you travel through a dark tunnel, eventually you will find the light. And brother, you will cringe. Your friends will cringe, but embrace this cringe. Let this cringe empower you. And over time, this cringe will lead you to your sacred path. On your journey, many people will say you don't have to do a voice for Dungeons and Dragons. I say fuck you to those people. You clicked on this video to learn how to do voices. This is how you learn. Now, white people, I love you. You have given us many gifts, like pizza and Ryan Reynolds. But for some reason, racial accents won't paint you in the best light. I don't know why, 
but minorities somehow get a pass for this, even if they have a dog shit accent. What that was? What that was? But if you do a really good job at it, then you're not gonna get any shit. Unfortunately, you won't know it's good until you try it in front of your friends. A true path that requires sacrifice. But if the second guy that voiced Uncle Iroh can do it, then you can too. God damn, I love this man. Now fly high, my brothers. For the path of voicing D&D characters is a long one. But even in the darkest times, hope is something you give yourself. That is the true meaning of strength. Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn